Ford is in a revolution. The transformation and the disruption is happening all around us. Supercharging, kind of this deeply caring human aspect of Ford, that's where we win. That's where we go out of the competition. You can't just listen and not change. We understand the urgency of climate change, and we understand that we have to do things now. As we looked at the restructuring and redesign, Always On was built into the redesign of our business. And what it means effectively is just ensuring we're always there for customers. This is the moment that we need to change, and change for the better, because this moment will define our future success. When you are the leader in the pack, you will always have enormous pressure on you. And so we always, every day, strive to be the best. At the heart of human progress is mobility. It's what drives the human journey. It's what helps people achieve their dreams. I want to help change this industry. If I'm lucky enough to be able to lead that charge, then I'm going to do it. We're designing and solving problems for millions of customers around the world and have a whole heap of fun whilst we're doing that. As leaders, now we're going to lead into the next generation. We have a great business that enables us to invest in the future. It was fascinating growing up in Northern Ireland. Um, I've never talked about this before, but my, my dad had a funeral business. We were right in the heart of the troubles at that time. And I think what it taught me is to move forward and get the best in people, you have to bring people together. The human being hates change. It challenges us to, to get out of the comfort zone, do things differently. Our turnaround in the region really started with a burning platform. And so once you process that, and you know what you're doing is the right thing, that's incredibly powerful in helping you deal with the emotions and helping the team deal with it. You're thinking about the entire social aspects of, uh, of the decisions you're, you're taking. We effectively reinvented ourselves. First and foremost, we put the customer right at the center of our plan and what we were doing. And it wasn't just about the purchase, it was about the entire ownership cycle. Second thing we looked at was the product portfolio that centered around core products like the Ranger, the Transit, the Mustang, the Bronco. We've announced the Bronco for all the markets in the region. Can you imagine the power of having the entire South America organization really focus on making the experience with that product better? I'm extremely happy that we're able to offer it to the customers and I expect it to be a great success. We're exploring here with a new service called Ford Go, where people can subscribe for a vehicle, they don't have to purchase the vehicle. We, we're starting to put a lot of attention on understanding how the customer wants to experience our vehicles. We've got to remember, Brazil was a country that almost skipped the landline and went straight to the cell phone. So that speaks volumes. The restructuring we put in place helps us be much more prepared for the future in terms of the opportunities that are coming with connectivity and also electrification. We're gonna to continue to serve customers, but we're gonna do it in a more defined way. That's key. The end goal here, that's to create a healthy, sustainable business and a healthy, sustainable future for all. We said we were going to transform our business in Europe, and we have done exactly what we said we were going to do. Transit is the backbone of business. We've all grown up with it. It's everywhere in our lives. And we're going to transform that brand and that segment. The e-transit is an absolute revolution for us. We spend a lot of time really, really, really deeply understanding customers. We then work very rapidly to build confidence in ideas by creating hundreds of prototypes. And it's very different to the normal process because typically in the automotive world, prototypes cost millions of dollars. In D Ford, they cost tens of dollars. And so if we're solving problems for our customers, those new ideas are actually gonna transform Ford and hopefully have a really big impact on the world around us as well. Electrification is about much more than the drivetrain. It's going from a mechanical to a digital age. That's why we're connecting all of our electrified vehicles. 
Our commercial vehicle customers have high demand for electrified, sustainable, but also connected products and the services that we can provide around them. Fleet customers are open to sharing data if, and only if, we can improve their business productivity. So Nick, are there any particular opportunities that you see there for Sky? Yes, I mean, huge opportunities in data for the efficiency of our fleet. Right. We're obsessed with uptime at Ford. 70% of our commercial customers tell us that the one thing that drives them completely insane is when their vehicle is off the road. They can't do their job, they let their end customers down, it damages their reputation. So downtime, bad. Uptime, good. Ford is the leader of the commercial vehicle business in Europe. And as leaders, we're going to lead into the next generation of products. And that's all about electrification. We have a great business. It generates great returns. That enables us to invest in the future. We're now investing a billion dollars to transform Cologne to be our first European electrification center. And that's one of the most important announcements I have made in my career. We have some very small goals inside D Ford. One, transform the future of Ford Motor Company. Two, make sure we're doing it in the most inclusive way possible because we're designing and solving problems for millions of customers around the world. Three, have loads of fun whilst we're doing that. <laughs> We are all in on electrification in Ford of Europe. We're going to lead the electrification revolution in commercial vehicles and in our passenger vehicles. You think the world's figured everything out, but they haven't. And there's so much opportunity in front of you and you just have to get really focused on it and obsessed about the customer and just start working on things one at a time. The way we're disrupting the credit business is simple. No sacred cows. That's how you're going to disrupt it, by coming with something that is radically different but radically better for our customers. That's when we decided that we would reorganize, put software first, and that we would modernize our operations and be about data and business center transformation and just getting completely obsessed about our customers. If you do us the honor of saying, hey, I want to renew my car with you, we better make it fast and quick and efficient. That's what I'm hunting for. These super specific, super tangible moments where we can make a big difference. And that's kind of the deep human component that Ford has. At the heart of human progress is mobility. It's what drives the human journey. Financing is a critical piece. It's what helps people achieve their dreams. Plumbers just want to plumb. Builders just want to build. We have the opportunity to help them not worry about their financing, or signing paperwork, or anything like that. Combining kind of this deeply caring human aspect of Ford with state-of-the-art technology, that's where we win. That's where we go out the competition. If I could go forward 10 years and look back, I'd like to think that we achieved our aspiration of being a reason to choose and stay with Ford. So this is the real deal, okay? I'll just tell you the story. We torture test the crap out of our Ranger to make sure it is ready for whatever any customer is going to put through it. And we know they're going to put our Ranger through the paces. It is really rare for a truck to become such a global hit all around the world, to have the sales accolades that we've had. And it's been such a hit because we have had such a laser focus on our customers. How different can people be? In some ways, Ranger customers are very, very similar, that they want to work and play and have a family life that's connected. But in some ways, a customer in Thailand versus a customer in the US or in the UK is unique in how they might really use that vehicle. And so we just need to make sure we understand that. There is commonality across all these markets. All customers are going to want to make sure that they're buying a safe, durable, reliable vehicle and that they can count on for their transportation. We're involved all over the world in car clubs. It's a very unique, passionate event. We pick up a lot of good ideas and think about how we might develop the next generation of Ranger. The new Ford is very different than the old Ford in terms of customer understanding. And really, it's not competing against other automotive people, but competing against other ways consumers' needs are being met. Or maybe 
it's an unmet need that nobody is satisfying, then we've really hit the holy grail. This is really an opportunity for us with over-the-air updates to stay connected with our customer through the life of the vehicle, much like you would on your phone. It's the way we work in society today. We are really excited about the Silverton assembly plan. It was a really big deal to land the investment of a billion dollars in South Africa. What's the most nerve-wracking is that it's a huge project. 1,200 people are going to get new jobs. So we have to deliver a quality product. I always think to myself, what does success look like? Fast forward, play the tape to the end. We have this new Ranger that's out. It's just wildly successful. Customers can't wait for it. And we are the number one selling mid-sized pickup around the globe. That would be really awesome, and we will be there. So if you ask me how we attract those younger generation of customers, go where they go and talk what they talk. In China, they call it customer defines future automobile, which means now the market, you have to be customer centric. The challenge for us is how to introduce the Lincoln to the younger generation customers in China. We all call it the Generation Z. They are the early adopters of whatever is new. They are very diverse and some of them are very tech savvy. The recent Shanghai Auto Show will be a really a turning point for the development for the electrification and the intelligence in China. It actually sparkling a very strong sense of urgency for all the automakers. So we must transform ourselves quickly to survive the tide. To be successful is also about the dealer. We need to engage our dealer network to be digitally connected and to transform themselves from traditional in-showroom event to online. And we have tried a lot of new initiatives. Catching this digital transformation has also pushed our Lincoln way into the digital area, creating a customer experience a ecosystem we focus on cultivating the new customer touching points and creating a whole digital purchase journey for our customer. Same, seamless branded experience. It's a small dream. It's very uh, personal. What I imagine in the future that the most important moment in your life, it can be small or can be really a bigger social cause. But regardless, bigger or small, that moment for the Chinese customer, that moment is always associated with Lincoln. That's my small dream for the future. When Elena says it's Ford or dealers, dealers are Ford, that rings very true to me without each other, there will never be that magic. And let's face it, there's thousands of moving parts in these cars. So when one of them wears and breaks, they don't go to Elena in Dearborn, they come to me in Bow, New Hampshire. Ford is in a revolution. The transformation and the disruption is happening all around us. Right, right, right. And you have to sort of every day think, okay, this is a little uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but we're gonna press through it. I guess if we can put ourselves in the driver's seat in terms of if I were the small business owner and this were my fleet of vehicles, what would I want and need? Simple things like digitizing communications, making paperless transactions, driving out to their work site as opposed to making them drive all the way in and lose a day of productivity. It looks like you just need a temperature sensor. It's an easy fix. Yep and I brought one on the truck. This is all about the always-on experience, right? Yeah, and right. So I think one of the big futures of retail is this online, offline experience. We're trying to make everything seamless and always on. I 
I don't have quite as many greats as you do in the business, but we're close. I don't want to speak for you, but I know for me, you see the name up there, and particularly John Graponi Ford, that was my grandfather. There's so much more to this than just moving some metal. I mean, this is all about, you have to build those lifelong relationships. Well, I think that's a really important point. You have to treat customers like family all the time. My grandfather taught me everything I know. I love cars, but I think it's just more fun to deal with people and, and making them happy. Not for nothing, I want to help change this industry. I want people who sell cars to be able to hold their heads high in our small communities. Whatever the goal is, if you do it with a humble heart, it will just be such a much more pleasant journey for everybody. In my position, you not only have to listen, listen to your customers, meaning to listen to the government, listen to my employees. You can't just listen and not change. Our values have always been constant. It's an environment, it's social and government. We have to address these things together. They're so intertwined. And to me, that's what this new restated purpose really does. Well, last year, Ford embarked on its diversity, equity, inclusion audit. We had to do this because of all the social unrest in the country. The things that we're seeing are just, you know, just unconscionable. Here in the plant, we talked about social unrest and talk about how did it make you feel. We have a battery electric F-150 that's coming out where we can truly impact the community and make that positive change we understand the urgency of climate change, and we understand that we have to do things now in order to make a difference. What keeps me up at night is how do we get harmonized regulation to make sure that we will have a planet in 100 years that our grandkids will be able to, you know, live and survive. Through Fort Fun, we make sure that we can bring our purpose to life. We provide opportunities we provide services where every person is free to move and pursue their dreams. So if we think about the transportation system and how it was designed and how it cuts through lower income communities, they are impacted the greatest. And so for me, making sure that we can educate consumers on a better choice, a lower carbon solution, it means so much to me because I want kids to have an environment where it's clean, they have fresh water, they have zero emissions, they have zero health degradation because of vehicles on the road.